Hi, I'm Tony Turner and welcome to the market now as of Friday, May 2nd at the close. A bounce in stocks is likely to face a test in coming weeks as traders and investors try to gauge whether the U.S. and other countries emerging from lockdowns can arrest a sharp fall in economic growth without provoking a resurgence of coronavirus cases. On a more positive note, Gilead Science Incorporated's antiviral drug remdesivir was granted emergency use authorization by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration for COVID-19 today, clearing the way for broader use of the drug in more hospitals around the states. And on that note, let's go on to three charts that should give us an insight into the week to come. First of all, as we always do, we're going to look at a daily chart of the S&P 500 Spider, symbol SPY. As you all know, this is the tracking stock or exchange traded fund that closely follows our S&P 500 index. Now, since the all-time closing high that we've talked about before on February 19th at $338, <clears throat> excuse me, and 34 cents, the SPY is now 17% off its highs off its all-time highs, so we're back in correction territory. Um, the benchmark has clawed its way all the way back up from its tw March 23rd low down here at 2018. I'm sorry, yeah, $218, about 2180 on the S&P 500. So now we can, if we want to, draw this trend line. I'm trying to make it straight up. And you can see that the SPY today in closing at $282.79 on its lows looks like it just might be able to break this particular uptrend line. We'll have to see, of course, going into the first of the week. The SPY is 30% off the lows at 2180 or 2018. So that's a good thing, but it's still down into correction territory. Now we got a good, we got a modest upswing this past week for the first three days of the week. Uh, some tech stocks came out with good earnings. Then it rolled over on Thursday and then Friday uh, on actually more earnings. Amazon took a little hit or maybe a big hit, depending on if you're in it and Apple uh, slid somewhat as well. So the SPY again today closed out the week at $282.79. It's still above the green line. It's 50-day moving average. It's still above uh, the red line, the 20-day moving average, the shorter-term moving average. However, it is still below the 200-day moving average, the black line that's coming in here at $300.07. So uh, about 3,000 on the S&P itself. So we're still below this line. Now, right here at 278, we're actually at the SPY. See that the top here, back up here at 338, that was the top. And if you look at this entire move down to 218, we know here, and if we stretched out Fibonacci retracement lines, we'd know that right now where the SPY is, it is pretty much right at the 50% line of this move down. So it's, it's rebounded 50%, a little more than that. However, in the past couple of days, it's fallen back down to that 50%. A lot of times when you see markets move down dramatically or move up to dramatically, the 50% line is usually a place where there where something starts to happen. It can act as resistance or it can act as support. So uh, we're there now. We're going to have to see what comes up uh, in the next. We've got about two weeks left of earnings, and we're going to, of course, we're going to keep moving deeper into the second quarter. Again, the market is going to try to gauge here in the next few weeks if the economy can remain relatively strong as we reopen the, our, our U.S. country. So you may want to firm up your protective stops in the next couple of days to stay on the safe side and please remain very watchful as to what happens next. Certainly you don't want to give back any of the profits that you've gained in the last couple of months. Okay, on to our next slide. 
The next slide is the Invesco QQQ daily chart. Of course, the QQQ represents the NASDAQ 100, which has been a very important index and, and will continue to be in this market because it holds in it uh, the top momentum stocks, uh, particularly, again, the stocks like uh, companies like Amazon, Facebook, uh, Alphabet, Intel, Microsoft, Apple, all of those, Netflix, it has all of those stocks in it. So it's been quite active recently. Now we can see it's above the 200 day moving average. So the QQQ or the NASDAQ 100 has really outperformed the S&P uh, in the last couple of months as people really have invested their trust and their money in tech stocks. It moved up and got a nice move up here this week, then fell on Friday. Closed out the week this week at $212.74. Now, it had the all-time closing high up here at $236.98. Uh, since then, it's made this dramatic move down to about $165, $167, or 166 excuse me, this dip here. Then it moved back up pretty dramatically and, and rode up here, and it looks like the SPY Maybe, maybe this particular, not, not the uptrend line, but an uptrend line because it could still make higher lows and higher highs and continue the uptrend, but maybe they're at a different pitch. We can see that Friday's uh, move here took out this very short-term short trend line. So that is one reason uh, that we see it. Maybe getting into overbought territory here, we see the RSI down here. It's not up over the overbought line, but the, uh, the, the RSI is definitely approaching it. So we want to keep an eye on the QQQ. We have, again, about two more weeks of earnings to go um, that, are, that are a lot, like hundreds of, of companies announced each day. We do have resistance up here at uh, about 220 it's right now again it's closed out at 212 dollars and 74 cents uh, we have support down here at 205 so if the sp if the qqq comes down and needs support of course we got the 20-day moving average coming in here at about 208 so there's tons of potential support all the way down here if the q's think it's time to need to take a rest the 50-day moving average is coming in a little over 200, and the 200-day moving average is coming in um, also at 201.50. So lots of potential support here. Again, if the QQQ and the big cap momentum stocks think that they need to take a rest down here. Still, um, I would be very, very careful here and keep my protective stops on. Of course, in this market, you can always keep an eye on Apple. It has come out with its earnings, and it seems once again to be turning into a leading indicator uh, for the QQQ. Particularly, it's a very big, I think it's the biggest component in that particular uh, index. So you can keep an eye on Apple to kind of gauge where the, where the uh, market may go. And also, please keep your stops in. Uh, we, we, we've got to be very watchful to see what happens in, the ne in this next move. Our final chart today is the Vanag Vectors Gold Miners ETF, symbol GDXJ. The GDXJ has 79 holdings. The top holdings include Kenross Gold, Evolution Mining, Northern Star Resources, Goldfields Limited, and Pan American Silver Corp. Uh, the e, the, you can't see it here, but the GDXJ made an all-time high of $179.44. You can't see it here because that was in December 2010. Now, it closed out the week. It, it, it fell after that dramatically, and of course, gold usually falls in a bull market. Uh, gold is used a lot of times, or gold, in this case, gold miners, are used a lot of times in a hedge if the market's falling. And we've had such an incredible bull market for the last 11 years that gold indeed has fallen. But now it's starting to shine a little bit again. Uh, the GDXJ uh, closed out the week this week at $41.30. 
we can see how it made this this uh, relative high up here, and that is now resistance, nearby resistance, on February 24th at $46.42. Then it fall, fell really hard here down to about 19, just below 100. Uh, then after a really messy beginning here, very undecided, started up pretty dramatically here and moved up in an uptrend and a really nice V-shaped recovery here, we might add, back up to where it has been trading for a while up here between 40, 41, 42, 43. So because of the circumstances now of, of um, so much money uh, uh, being loaned to so many companies and, and, and so forth, um, the, the financial um, state of the US may be concerning to some people. So the GDXJ may be a place to look, and I'm certainly gonna keep an eye on it in the coming week. Uh, if it remains positive, and again, you see here it closed at 41.30. If it remains positive, if it stays above 40 here, uh, I'm gonna buy, I probably, I should say, will buy a small position with an initial stop here at uh, $35.25, right here below the 50-day moving average, which is coming in at $35.38. So just below that, I'm going to place a protective stop. Now, uh, if it moves, if it starts moving here and moves against this very near-term resistance at 43, if the GDX moves up and moves over 43, I'll probably add to my position, and at that point, my stop will be turned into a trailing stop. I'm going to look here and see if by any chance it can move up here and move up and over 46.50. If it can do that, it's going to be clearing uh, a resistance point that goes back several years. So that, that's something I'm going to watch intently. If it, can, if it can run up over 46.50, I'll probably add to the position. Again, I've got a trailing stop in place. So uh, please do know also that if the gold market rolls uh, defiantly to the downside while I'm in this trade, I may exit the trade early before it reaches my stop. So just want you to know that, but you may want to keep an eye on the GDXJ and indeed the GDX in the coming week. And now, please know that I've temporary, uh, temporarily suspended my usual list of next week economic reports to briefly touch on the top pop, <laughs> excuse me, to briefly touch on the topic below. If you want to see a calendar of those economic reports, go to TonyTurner.com, click on Education on the top toolbar, and then Economic Reports. Okay, so let's talk a little bit here again this week about market psychology. Uh, this is very, very important to your trading career. And I wanted to touch on a few points in these weeks when everything is in kind of an unusual state to make sure that your mental and emotional approach to the market remains strong. So I've asked a series of questions in the last few weeks. Today's question is, do I stay in a losing trade in denial, even if my reason for entering the trade is no longer valid? Have you ever done that? Now, many times we've entered a trade because we've heard the company is ripe for a takeover or maybe it's issued good earnings or maybe the sector was upgraded by one of the big brokers or maybe the setup was a good one and there's nothing wrong with that or an analyst on a financial network said the company was going to be the new Amazon. Whatever the reason, it seemed plausible at the time and it probably was. But what if? Okay, the what ifs here are important. What if after you bought shares of that company and you pinpointed a mental stop, what if the price falls and hits that stop? That is when you need to exit and realize the reason you entered the trade, at least at this moment in time, is no longer valid. It no longer matters. Many times, though, we stubbornly hang on to those kinds of trades uh, we, we are, we're losing money and we take denial to the outside of the envelope. 
Now, denial is one of the biggest reasons. Please know this. Denial is one of the biggest reasons traders lose money. Human beings, we want to be right. We want to be right. And we can be very, very stubborn about hanging on to the original reason that we bought a stock. We can say things like, hey, it's a good company. It will come back even while we continue to lose money. So let's not do that anymore. Please take time out of each day to examine your trades. If the trade is moving against you, review the reason you entered the trade. Is it still valid? If it isn't, you might be best off exiting the trade and taking your present loss. Please make a valiant effort to remove denial from your trading day. If you do, I promise you'll be a lot happier and you'll bring home bigger, bigger profits. Okay, now one more thing before we end. Please know that at TonyTurner.com, we, we have discounted all of our training programs 20%. This is a limited time only offer. So if you go to the orange button below or the link on this screen, check out, um, check out this discount. At checkout, you can enter the discount code that you see here, 20 product. And all of my online trainings right now are at a 20% discount. So this is a limited time only. We will be cutting this off within the next week or so. So if you're interested, please go now and check out our discount. Until next week, keep green on your screen. This is Tony Turner, and this is The Market Now.